Okay, now we are ready to uh, put in a valley flashing. And uh, in order to do that, we want to make sure, first of all, that we've, we've got the uh, valley piece centered. Here we've chalked a line. Um, if this was longer than one section of valley, you would have to taper the two valleys in order to mate them together. Want to bring this down to the point where the two corners of the valley meet the starter strip. I'm going to take a marker. I'll make sure that I'm centered. I'm going to turn it over. I want to make two one inch under turn tabs. So again, I'm going to use my steel ruler. I'm going to have to make relief cuts right there and right there. Going to angle this back just just a tad bit. I'm going to round these right here. I'll flip it back over and. Uh, Here's where a wide uh, pair of seamers is going to come in real handy. Come back and flatten this a little more. Okay, now we are ready to install our first panel that's going to overlap uh, partially into the valley. And uh, I want to set the, the panel right against the uh, seam, the standing seam there, the rib. And I want this to come down about an inch and five eighths. Um, remember, I, I'm going to leave about three eighths of an inch extra to form a tab over, and I've got to have about an inch and a quarter to wrap underneath uh, the starter strip. So inch and five eighths is a good number there. Then what I've done is I've, I've taken my ruler and I've extended the line from this fold and I've lined it up underneath and marked made a mark where it crosses that, that hem. Then I made another mark about a, a quarter of an inch farther because remember this whole panel is going to shift about a quarter of an inch to my left when I put it over this, this standing seam. I've also marked up here where it crosses. I'm going to have to cut the, the lock off here and then cut it off down there. And then finally, I want to have about an extra inch of material to fold back into the hem of the valley.
I'm going to have to cut off just a little bit of this in order to be able then to fold this uh, bottom lock under. Here I've got, um, I mentioned an inch and five eighths is where it's going to cross there. So that's where I'm going to, that's going to be my bend point. Three eighths there. I'm going to come back and then I'm going to go over and down. One more thing I'm going to want to do here is to come straight up from this point where it's going to cross this, this edge of the valley. Um, I want to leave this open so that if there is any moisture or water in here it can drain out. Um, I'm going to come straight up from here. Now if it's just a hair long, I'll probably take my hammer and round it over once I get it uh, in place. Probably not a bad idea to angle that a good bit. So this is the tab that goes into the valley hem, this is the tab that wraps around the starter, and this opening is for any moisture under there to be able to drain out. So now we're ready to put on the second panel uh, that is going to go into the valley. And I've you've noticed I've already cut off some excess of this panel so that I can sit it flat to make my markings. Um, I want to leave about three eighths of an inch past the end of this rib for the lock uh, in order that again so that I'll have that flap to fold around. So, Maybe three eighths or just a hair over three eighths. Just going to make a mark right there, and I'm going to cut up there. I'm going to cut across, and then down this way, and I'll have my flap to go over. Now, while having it in position here, I'm going to take my steel rule, and I'm going to mark the point that the panel. Is presently going over the rib or the hem I should say. And then remember I'm going to be shifting about oh, a quarter of an inch this direction. So I'm going to come down about uh, a little more than a quarter of an inch and make another line that's going to be my, my bend line. And then again using my ruler as a convenient guide, one inch wide. So that's going to be my cut line for my underturn hem or lock. And again I'm going to cut this rib off right in line there.
Now these seamers are only nine inches wide, so I'm just gonna bend this just a little and then work my way down. Not try to bend it all at once. Cut that back far enough so that it easily goes into the channel there. Gonna make just a little snip here so that this folds over the way I want it to. 